What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be sharing a little quick tip on how you can use a Z-Pass effectively to composite some 2D stock elements into your 3D scene and integrate them into the geometry of your shot. Now, before we get started, I should mention that this is actually my second favorite way of integrating 2D stock elements into the scene. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is to actually import the stock element as a 2D card in your scene and place it very specifically in the geometry. And that technique I've covered in another video. I'll put a link to that in the description description below. However, this technique of just exporting and compositing a stock element with a Z-Pass allows you to export your image and composite after the fact with a little bit more control over how you can tweak the element in the post-production process. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is just a little sample scene that I've set up here for the sake of this tutorial. I've used some City Builder 3D add-on Warzone assets here and we're just going to be placing some fire in this destroyed building here and integrating it with the building geometry itself in the compositing process. So super simple scene setup here. I've used an HDRI to light the scene and uh, then rendering out just 20 samples and rendering in cycles. Now before you render out a frame of your scene, you want to make sure that you're actually exporting your Z depth data pass. So to export this pass, just go to your view layer properties and now we can just click to include the Z depth pass here. And now that we have enabled that, we can just go to render and render image and let's get into our compositing process. All right guys, so this is the render we're going to be working with here. I'll go ahead and close our render preview and we'll go to the compositing tab and get started here. And I've done a very simple node setup here to get started. Uh, make sure you select the use nodes option and then all I've done here is I've just added a colored background where the alpha channel is. So a very simple node setup here. Now let's add some fire to this building and integrate it into the 3D geometry. So first thing I'm going to do is add our fire element. So I'll go ahead and press shift A and I'm going to use a movie clip where our stock footage element is saved. I'll go ahead and open it here. And I just have some fire elements here. I'm going to use this big fire three element. Go ahead and open this. And I'll go ahead and just view our element here really quick. So this is what we have and this is what we're going to composite into our render. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press shift A. We'll add a color mix node, add this right after our alpha over where our background is. And we'll connect the stock element into the bottom input of our mix node. And if your stock element has an alpha channel, which mine does, to uh, get rid of this black background, we can just click on alpha. And now as you can see here, the alpha channel is working correctly. And if your stock element doesn't have a alpha channel, for example, if it has a black background, then you're just gonna wanna change the blend mode to screen. But anyways, this is looking pretty good. Now what we want to do before we use the Z pass is actually just position our stock element right where we want it to be. So I want our stock element kind of inside of our building here and maybe coming out through the right windows here. So to adjust it, I'll just press shift A. I'll add a distort transform, add this right after our stock element. And I'll just start messing with the X and Y values to position it over where we want it. I want to bring down the scale a little bit as well, maybe 0.75, make sure it's not too big big, maybe 0.8 and we just want to position it generally where we want it to be. So this is a good start for the position of our element. We can adjust it later as well. However, you can see that the fire is not very well integrated into our actual CG environment here. So now it's time to use that Z-Pass to tell Blender where we want this fire to show up within the 3D geometry of our scene. So I'll just go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and bring down our background levels a bit so it's uh, not too bright there, but let's go ahead and use our Z-Depth Pass here. And we're going to use it to drive the factor of our mix node and tell Blender where we want this fire to be. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what the Z-Pass is first. So I'll add another output viewer node. And if we just connect our depth path, which is our Z-Pass, to our viewer, you'll notice that we just have a white image here. And that's because the Z-Depth Pass contains values past one, which are red as white. So to fix this, what we need to do is we need to normalize the values so that they're only between zero and one. And there's a specific node for that called normalize. So I'll go ahead and press shift A. I'll search for it here, normalize grab it and then add it right before our viewer node where the depth pass is. And this is what our depth pass data is actually looking like. So you can see how this could be useful. Essentially, we're going to use the white and black parts to drive a mat for the mix factor input. 
So before we actually add it to our factor input here, I'm actually going to adjust it with a color ramp. So I'll press shift A, I'll go here to converter, color ramp, then I'll add it right before our viewer node. And now what we can do is we can slowly start bringing down our black levels and bringing up our white levels. And what we want to do is use the black portions of the Z pass to hide where our fire is going to be. So right now, this should be about right. White could be a little bit brighter since we want the fire to be where the white data is. So bring this down a little bit and we can very clearly, you know, place where we want this fire. So something like this is pretty good. Essentially, where the white values and the black values connect, that's where our fire is going to be uh, integrated into the 3D scene. So I think this should be about right. We can adjust the color ramp a bit later. But now what we can do is we can connect this color ramp image output to the factor of our mix node where we are overlaying our stock element. And now I can go ahead and delete this other viewer node and let's see what we get. Right off the bat, you can see that the fire is actually being integrated into the geometry a bit better. Now, it's not very bright. That's because the white values aren't bright enough. So I'll just bring the white part of the color ramp over a bit, make sure everything comes through just fine. And now you can see that the fire actually looks like it's inside of the building here. And now we can do some more standard things such as, you know, add some, perhaps some glare to our fire, make it a little bit brighter, perhaps you know, duplicate this, perhaps add some color correction on the fire as well. And I'm also going to adjust our the placement of it as well. And you can see here that we're using the depth of our geometry to hide where the fire is being overlaid. So it's not perfect right now. We may have to do some cleanup on the edges here, but you can see if we do a before and after without the actual Z pass integrated, Here's before, just kind of slapped on our CG environment. And then once we add the Z depth to it, everything is integrated into the shot quite a bit better. So that's how you can use a Z pass to integrate stock elements into your CG renders. Just for fun, I might add some more fire in this right building here. So I will repeat this process, just to duplicate our fire element here along with the data correlated with it. I'll duplicate our mix node, add this to the bottom input of this mix node, and I'll reposition the fire so that it's kind of where we want it to be here on this right element. Something like this, Let's bring up the scale a little bit to 0.8, maybe even one. This could be pretty interesting. And now let's use the Z pass on this building. So I'll grab the Z pass from the normalize node here. I'll add another color ramp. I'll go to converter, color ramp, add this right here. Grab the Z depth after we've normalized it with this node, plug it in here and we'll add a viewer node so we can adjust our Z pass data effectively. And we'll just do the same thing here. Bring up the dark values. Again, we're just trying to find the sweet spot where we wanna put that fire element. Probably something like this is about right. Remember the black values are our mask. So this should be about right. Now we'll go ahead and delete our viewer node, connect our Z pass after the color ramp to the factor input. And now you can see this fire is much better integrated into our environment as well. And obviously there are more things we could do to clean this up and make it look better, but this is just one way you can use the data of your 3D scene to integrate your 2D elements into your footage. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel. Lots more visual effects videos, tutorials, and short films coming very soon. I really appreciate all the support. I'll see you next time.